What? You? You looking at me? You looking at me? How's that? <laughs> Who's your engineer? Well, I uh, am really going to uh, try and get through this video a, a lot quicker than normal. I'm not going to go into uh, a very in-depth discussion of this particular topic, which of course, uh, as you can see from the thumbnail, is the Mantis Sphere. Um, so where did this project originate? Well, uh, I, I always intended to build a another folding spear based on some of the comments that I received on my original folding spear which uh, is uh, made out of titanium and uh, extruded or pultruded uh, glass fiber battens uh, and uh, you can check that video out for more context on that I've put two videos out on that particular uh, topic but I've got a lot of comments and I've got a lot of people asking for uh, me to revisit uh, or redesign the project based on a telescopic or telescoping uh, spear assembly. Now that actually is a uh, mechanically apparently simple but isn't actually that simple of a project. Specifically because of the, the structural integrity of the telescoping poles. It would be extremely easy to build a toy uh, telescoping spear, one that couldn't really uh, function effectively in real combat. It's a lot more difficult to build that as a fully functional weapon. I do have every intention of building a telescoping spear at some stage, but uh, when I started this project out, we were in process of trying to find the right type of uh, material to make the telescoping tubes uh, out of. I, I wouldn't want to build it out of anything other than at least uh, aircraft grade aluminium of a, of a significant thickness. So uh, between 2.5 and, uh, and 3.2 mil thick uh, telescoping tubes. And then in addition to that, it would have to be uh, reinforced at certain sections, probably using uh, bonded uh, uh, fabrics like Kevlar and glass fiber and stuff like that. So uh, that in and of itself is actually quite uh, an in-depth project. But um, I, I got a lot of input on this project from uh, one, of my, one of my viewers who's uh, actually become one of my mates, uh, Jonathan Chalk. So I want to shout out to him uh, in this video. He was uh, a, a bit of an inspiration for me to keep going with the project. Uh, he is also a, uh, a, an innovator, an inventor, um, and he has a, uh, a, a, a very um, a considerable interest in the folding spear as aspect of the project. He has uh, invented and built quite a few uh, takedown uh, spears and folding spears of various descriptions and he has some ideas that he wants to build at some stage. So we've been sharing ideas and um, he actually gave me a lot of good uh, good information, uh, sent me off on some good steers as far as the uh, aluminium uh, for the project was concerned. But unfortunately we were let down by the company that we were in uh, communication with to get the aluminium. And so the project took a, a veered off um, into a uh, territory that, um, that I at least had some materials uh, for, which is, uh, it, uh, I just, uh, because we, we got led down the garden path, I decided to uh, use G10 fiberglass sheets, which I, I have some uh, uh, G10 fiberglass sheets in my, in my uh, workshop, uh, four millimeter thick. And so I decided to build a spear out of that and at first I, I, I've, this project went through several design iterations. At first I was going to build some form of like a telescoping spear except sort of interleaved layers of G10 that slid across each other so essentially flat, um, uh, flat strips that would slide in and out of each other. 
Uh, unfortunately, as that progressed, that design progressed, I realized that uh, the thickness at the base of the spear would just become unworkable, ridiculous, because of the thickness of the glass fiber I would have to use in order to make it structurally sound. So I dumped that idea and I went on to a, another version of a folding spear. And I decided to use um, this kind of, eventually decided to use this kind of arrangement. So a pair of, a pair of levers uh, in parallel, essentially, um, which uh, separate the, the, uh, the, the two, the back section of the spear and the, the, the front section of the spear and form a, uh, form a fully full length spear. And so that's where this project came from. You could say that I was inspired by um, may, may, a couple of different things. One of them may have been the, um, the Mantis blades that you get in the uh, Cyberpunk uh, 2077 game, or the Cyberpunk universe uh, full stop. I haven't played the game, um, but uh, I do enjoy the imagery and I enjoy the, uh, the, the sort of lore behind it and, and, and some of the weapons that come out quite fun. So, uh, my personal uh, uh, sort of assessment of the Mantis Blades in Cyberpunk is that um, as a normal human being, they would essentially be unusable. Uh, just mechanically, they are uh, not, um, uh, not efficient. Um, and, uh, but of course, if you are a cybernetically enhanced human, um, essentially it's, uh, you can uh, pretty much do whatever you want to as long as, uh, as, long as you, you, you cybered up in the right way. So that's the way that I guess that they excuse the mechanical disadvantage that the Mantis Blades in the game would give you. But I decided to build something that would function a little bit like the Mantis Blades, but would, uh, would be usable by a normal human being. And that's where the uh, Mantis Spear sort of came from. Uh, of course, there were other inspirations as well, but that was one of them. Um, so, just to briefly run through the, um, uh, the various elements of the spear and how they were constructed before we go on to uh, onto the, the testing um, section. Um, as I've said before, I built most of the spear out of G10 fiberglass various thicknesses um, in terms of laminating various uh, stacks of four millimeter thick uh, G10 fiberglass sheets together. The, uh, the front and the rear of the spear uh, is, uh, it consists of uh, three layers of four mil thick uh, uh, fiberglass sheet all laminated together. The uh, lever arms are two, mil uh, two layers of four millimeter thick uh, G10 fiberglass. I did a lot of shaping on it and removal of material in order to uh, reduce the weight as far as possible. I'd say that this is probably a little bit over-engineered in terms of its uh, robustness. I could probably have gotten away by making it uh, with making it a little bit lighter, but I prefer to over-engineer things um, and uh, in, in, in favor of something that's actually going to last and that's going to be robust. So it's not light. Uh, it weighs around 1.7 kilograms. I will put the actual weight in the video for you um, in the text below. The spear point I made out of a, uh, an offcut of titanium I had lying around, hence the unusual shape. It's a very aggressive uh, penetrating tip, only sharpened on one end, uh, on one side, at least one, one edge. It's also four millimeters thick, and um, it has a rearward-facing hook, which of course can be used to hook and uh, and draw in or, or manipulate an opponent uh, at a distance. The um, the spear is also, you could say, um, uh, it's uh, enhanced with a uh, a spring-loaded tendon. Uh, and the, 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 as you can see, when I, when I fold the spear, the spring gets put into tension and, uh, and then helps in deployment to um, increase the ease with which the, the spear folds out once it gets past a certain point. Um, 
I'll put in some footage of me working with the prototype uh, model that I put together, built out of core flute, to show you what I had originally hoped to try to um, use the spear as. Um, so what I originally wanted to use the spear as is is a weapon that I could that I could strike with and draw back. As you can see, I can do that with the spear but it's not light enough. So in my assessment, the spear is not light enough to make that movement fast, agile, and efficient enough for it to be used primarily like that. So um, essentially, the spear, um, once deployed, I think typically would be used as a full length spear. Um, except for potentially occasions during combat where for some reason you might you might want to draw it back quickly and then and then fire it again that but that would be very rare very seldom that you would want to do that as you can see <clears throat> because of the play in the mechanism here the uh, the end of the spear kind of droops down a little bit it's got a drooping tip problem. <laughs> Although it's not really a problem, it's just that you shouldn't see this as a typical conventional spear, which is straight. If I lock it here, if I like use my hand to manually lock this in place, it becomes a straight spear and I can use it typically uh, as a typical straight conventional spear. However, it's fully functional like this, and you'll see from the tests that we did that it's actually fully functional. These joints, the way that I've designed them, uh, where they, they sort of kind of fold into each other, um, as you can hopefully see from this and from some of the close-ups that we took of this, this these joints, both of them, act as a, as a kind of gravity lock. So the, the weight of a spear and the way that I manipulate incoming forces here, I can actually keep these things locked unless I specifically want it to close, in which case I'm going to apply an upward force here, which is going to break that gravity lock. The gravity lock mechanism works either with the hook facing down, as I've got it here, or with this with the hook facing up. In this case, the gravity lock is uh, it, 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 it works on this joint. So quite an interesting little arrangement. As I said, you've got to kind of move your head outside of the conventional straight spear um, kind of mindset to really appreciate this for what it is. What I might do is I might just get the Wushu scientists to come and apply a little bit of pressure on the, uh, on the end of the spear here to show you that, uh, obviously not standing in front of it though, um, to the side to show you that uh, so if you just resist me as I push forward So as you can see the the spear is locked It's not going to fold unless I want it to so as I'm pushing forward if I want it to fold I can just break that gravity lock and fold and in this case I'm actually going to catch her hands in the in the joint which won't be very nice I can do it on the other side as, 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 as well, so if I lock it in there and keep it there, if I, if I just make sure that the forces are moving through those joints in the right way, the gravity lock works just fine. Thanks. In terms of length, this is not a long spear. It is actually significantly longer than my previous spear, as you can see, by nearly a foot. So there are the two spears side by side from the ground. So, and, uh, and when it folds up, it folds up into a package that's essentially the same length as, uh, as, as this spear folds up into. So, really pretty cool, quite, an, quite an, um, an enhancement on the original spear design. I'll actually show you a comparison between the two uh, scabbards of sheets. So this is for my previous spear. And this is for the mantisphere. So as you can see, the profile of the mantisphere may be a little bit thicker, uh, mantisphere sheath or scallop, but for all intents and purposes, almost identical in size. 
Incidentally, I pulled the sheath out of uh, wood, so there's like a wooden frame running around along the, the edges, forming the sides, uh, and the, the front and the back plate are made out, are, are essentially just um, polypropylene sheets um, screwed onto the sides. So, and it functions just fine, as you'll, as you'll see in the tests. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, the handle, uh, I might just get onto the handle portion of the spear. As you can see, there's a little bit of thought and design that's gone into the handle, the, at least the back, uh, the back point at which you hold the spear. I've put this handle at a little bit of an angle to the main body of the spear, so that you can get more of your hand it's a little bit more comfortable to assert force linearly forward through it. I put some uh, some ergonomic shoulder, I mean, ergonomic finger ridges in here just uh, just because it looks cool. There's a large foot at the back, uh, just before the butt rest of the of the spear, and this is so that if you do your um, your uh, uh, Scorpio style. Get over here! Kind of movements. Get over here! Your hand won't accidentally, or it's very unlikely that your hand is going to accidentally slip off the back of the of the spear, so that you've got more purchase as you're pulling back. Um, I think that's about all for the spear. Um, if you if you'd like more detail. Let me know in the comments below because uh, I don't want to get into too much detail for, uh, with the, how the spear was constructed. In terms of future development, this I see as a prototype. I don't believe that this is the final product. As I said, what I really wanted out of the spear was that ability to, to dart in and out and fold back um, as you're busy fighting, which opens up a whole new um, let's say it, it, it's, a, it's a class of weapon in its own right. I think it kind of deserves its own fighting techniques. And if you built one that was light enough to be quick, nimble, fast, but obviously robust enough to uh, survive uh, the rigors of combat, I think it could be quite, quite interesting to develop a fighting system and series of techniques uh, around that. And what I envision is actually a much smaller version of this, about 40 centimeters long when it's, when it's folded up, but when unfolding, reaching out to uh, just over a meter. Now that may not seem like a lot. Uh, it's, of course, it's a, it's a lot shorter than this spear, which is, uh, which is roughly 1.6 meters uh, long when folded out. But in terms of, in terms of uh, something which you could say occup would occupy the space of a, like a short sword or, a, or a, a very large bowie knife, to be able to get that one meter reach on the, on the weapon might make for a very interesting uh, sidearm uh, in an imaginary universe. And in terms of in terms of this spear and its length, I might just grab my traditional spear. So this is this is my traditional spear from my system of Kung Fu. As you can see, it is significantly longer than this spear by nearly two feet. Uh, so this spear is short, and it's not it's clearly nowhere near as long as this spear. But still, for a a weapon that um, for a weapon that folds up to this kind of length, 1.6 meters is nothing to sniff at. And um, yeah, for something that can be worn on the, at the side, very much like a sidearm but still fold out to give you similar kind of reach to what you might expect from, uh, from some battlefield weapons. I think it's quite a, cool, quite a cool idea, quite a cool design. And I'm actually really interested and excited in developing the smaller version, which I will, 
I've chosen to call the Mantis Claw. Um, and in terms of design, I'm actually, I would redesign the, the, the tip of the spear for that Mantis Claw design to make it more like a karambit style blade so that you can capitalize on the mechanics of this folding out movement and actually focus the force into, uh, into more of a circular trajectory um, into the tip. So it will no longer really function, the mantis tool will no longer really function as a conventional spear being able to linearly strike forward. But as I said, it becomes a whole new weapon class in its own right. So something really interesting the, to develop in future. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. What we'll, uh, or at least this description. What we'll go into now is we'll go into some of the tests and uh, see how that went. We're not on the range today, um, but please bear with any gunfire you may hear. I think the neighbor's testing something out with uh, perhaps his shotgun. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a couple of penetration tests. There it goes. A couple of penetration tests. Um, I've got a one millimeter, uh, sorry, not one millimeter, one centimeter thick um, plywood sheet here. So we'll just see how, how it goes. a particularly particularly um, powerful strike but uh, some significant penetration anyway the system is holding up fine try again okay so I put a little bit more behind it that time went straight through this uh, sheet of plywood and I think probably embedded partly in the plywood at the plywood sheet at the back between this sheet of plywood and the foam pad. So some significant penetration there of course it's a very aggressive tip very aggressive penetrative tip but still the the main demonstration point here is that the although it although the system looks a little bit um, uh, loose because of the nature of the mechanical uh, connections through it's uh, more than strong enough to um, be used for reasonable force with reasonable force in um, in typical sort of penetration through um, hard materials okay so now I have the same backpack Excuse the shooting. I have the same backpack set up um, that I tested in my Can a Backpack Save Your Life video with uh, the uh, infamous notepad in the back and uh, packed with some shirts and clothes in the front. So we'll see what kind of penetration I get using uh, the Mantis. that felt like it went right through all of the layers of clothing and into the notepad. We'll take the notepad out and we'll have a look at it at the end. Again, I think a similar result. One final strike. So, I don't know if you can see this particular 
triangular penetration point. Let's make sure that you can actually see that. Hopefully you can see that. You can see that it's a little bit different from the diamond shaped uh, penetration points of my previous spear. This penetration went all the way through um, the diary. And that was from the mantis spear. As you can see, the mantis spear uh, uh, point profile is triangular. Uh, the cross section is triangular. And so that's, that's where it penetrated right there. As you can see, it fits exactly into that hole. So significantly superior penetration to my my um, other spear point, which of course is is uh, shorter and and broader, but very interesting nonetheless that it actually went through all the layers of clothing in the uh, admittedly rather battered uh, backpack, but went through all of these layers of clothing and penetrated right through the the um, the note the the diary at the back very interesting so this is the simple uh, scabbard that I've built for the uh, mantis spear it's uh, just a wood and um, poly propylene sheet uh, construction so it's, it's fairly lightweight, but it is it is bulky. Of course, the spear itself is bulky, but occupies quite a small, uh, really quite a small length in terms of in terms of uh, a, a weapon scabbard or sheath. So we'll try some we'll try some draws from the from the sheath. How's that? <laughs> straight in. That's quite straight in. Deep in there. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is pretty awesome. I'll do one more. So that's pretty, fairly um, successful. So we'll go on to the multi-attacker scenario now. I'm not going to wear the... Hello? Yeah, maybe we'll do it with, with this on as well. Why not? Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, shall I stop now? Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, some significant damage on uh, these bottles. This was just a straight penetration puncture. This was a get over here <laughs> kind of <move. laughs> This is a straight penetration through. And uh, yeah, that one was just totally ripped. This one as well. I think this might have also been another Scorpio. Get over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was quite a bit of fun. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.